Shove it, man! Shove it, squad. So it's been a bit of a crazy week in wrestling, right? Vince McMahon finally retires. I mean, let's be honest, it wasn't going to be easy coming back from that scandal. And who knows what else has been covered up in the past. Typical billionaire. And right before the SummerSlam pay-per-view too. We've got Logan Paul versus The Miz. We've got Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. We've got The Usos versus Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford. Who? Not sure who, but it could be a really great match, but... Oh no. A wild slap nuts of his. Yeah, that's right. Slap nuts himself, Jeff Jarrett, as a special attraction 2022 as a referee. That's how low the WWE has sunken. Slap nuts needs to be a draw. And Jarrett as a ref? I mean, how could he do that? He killed so many referees over his career. And what, now he wants to join them? It doesn't make any sense. He literally hates anything black and white, he even hates zebras. Jeff Jarrett will be joining the group of people he physically abused over the years. And you might think I'm exaggerating. There's a reason one of Jeff Jarrett's four moves of doom is the ref bump. But the real question is, just how many refs were bumped? I'm probably going to seriously regret making this video because the Henderson Hillbilly had 174 TNA matches and I'm about to watch them all. Yes, you heard me right. So screw it. Starting right out from day one of TNA. We're only looking at ref bumps during matches because I don't want to get into the realms of fantasy here. It might be fun if some of you can post down in the comments section right now on what you believe is going to be the final answer. So we're looking at bumps that happened during matches. Jeff didn't necessarily need to do them, but it was during his match that it happened. So how many ref bumps and slap nuts matches? 174 matches. Kill me. It's Jeff Jarrett and then there was a ref bump. Now surprisingly, Jarrett's first ever TNA match contains zero ref bumps. Unfortunately, this won't be a case of start as you mean to go on. Anyway, it's a battle royal, so there isn't really even a ref in the ring, so Jarrett had no chance to beat anyone up. His second match is against Elvis, aka Scott Hall. This match doesn't have a ref bump either, but it does have a ref distraction and a punch to the slash zone. Jarrett loses again, not the start we had in mind. Well, let's get this party started because match 3 has our first ref bump. A tag match between Jarrett and Brian Lawler taking on The Truth and Elvis. Hall gives Jarrett an atomic drop which causes Jeff to bounce into the referee. The ref conveniently wakes up in time to count the three, as soon as Jarrett covers Hall. The next match will be a stretcher match, but will the ref be needing that stretcher by the end of the match? And the answer to that is yes, he will need it. Jarrett ducks Hall's stretcher shot and it hits the referee. To add insult to injury, Jarrett drop kicks Hall and both Hall and the stretcher smash into the ref on the ground. Steamboat rubs the ref's armpits in an effort to try and make him feel better, and then he accidentally helps Jarrett hit the stroke onto the chair, all with an eyesight at the ref who wakes up in time to count the three straight away. I'm only going to count that match as one ref bump because I don't think the second one was meant to happen. So, so far we're running at 50% of ref bumps in Jeff Jarrett matches. Match 5 is Jarrett versus Apollo for the number one contendership for the heavyweight belt. So you damn well know that Jarrett's going to do whatever it takes to get the heavyweight belt. The special ref is Steamboat, so don't know if that'll change anything. Well, despite this match having a terrible ending, it doesn't have a ref bump. Jeff does try to hit Steamboat after the match, but he can't manage it. So tween a Stone Cold Slap Nuts hasn't killed that many referees so far. Match 6, Jarrett and the Truth taken on Lynn and Styles. Slappy throws AJ into a spear on the referee. The match is eventually declared a draw after a double finish. Match 7, Jarrett versus Mold Dog under a mask. This one features Jarrett beating up Mold Dog's dad with multiple chair shots whilst Road Dog is cuffed to the ropes. It doesn't have a finish, but it still counts. That's four ref bumps and seven matches so far. Now we have Jeff Jarrett versus Mold Dog again. This one has plenty of chair shots in front of the ref, and it's not even a no DQ match, so there's no reason to have to beat the ref up if he's going to let everything go. Well, you'd be wrong about that. Road Dog lightly brushes the referee, which somehow leaves him blinded for a full 30 seconds. Mold Dog sends him into Jarrett's own chair shot, but it doesn't help him get the free. Half the TNA roster runs out, which once again distracts the ref, and Jarrett hits a chair shot. That won't be the free either. Then the ref just disqualifies Jarrett because I guess he can't hand away more run-ins. Worst ref ever. Match 9 features Brian Lawler sparking out a referee. As he was a teammate of Slapnuts, I'd say he was involved. Sadly, it didn't help his team win. Match 10, Mold Dog and Expat taking on Jarrett and Lawler. You might be shocked to hear that there's absolutely no ref bumps in this one as Degeneration Mold pick up the win. There's no need to grin. Match 11 is another tag match, but the twist here is that instead, Jarrett is tagging with the world-renowned heavyweight Bruce. This match was bad enough without needing a ref bump. That's six dead refs and 11 matches so far. That's still more than half, but I think it could get worse or am I having a laugh? Match 12, once again, it's Hall versus Jarrett. <laughs> and just like clockwork, Hall almost crashes into the referee and then he ducks Jarrett who clotheslines the ref. 
Jarrett uses a chair whilst he's down, but millions of other people run out. Scott Hall wins it with the razor's edge. Jarrett's actually only won one match so far with a ref bump in it, so maybe he needs a new finisher. Or is it just going to get more deadly as the video goes on? Match 13 is Jarrett taking on Kurt Hennig. Slapnuts is smart here and he smacks Hennig with a chair before the bell is even rubbed, so this removes the need to beat the referee up. Like a complete dick, the referee decides to ring the bell and Jarrett hits the stroke almost straight away for the win. Match 14 is also Kurt Hennig. Good ref bump here. Hennig punches the referee over the guard well and he flies through the air like the hawk. A different ref tries to stop Henning using a chair, so he slaps him and hits him with the chair. Two ref bumps in one match, which is a record so far. And neither of them were Jeff, but for the purpose of this video, we're counting how many ref bumps were in Jeff Jarrett matches, whether he did them or not. Nine dead refs in 14 matches. Jarrett wins this one by DQ. Match 15. Once again, it's Slapnuts taking on the moldy one. This is another match where the ref has given up. He lets them fight with weapons in the crowd. Jarrett wins it for kicks to the slash zone and the stroke, but surprisingly, no ref bump. Maybe he's better off not using that move anymore. He does better when the ref doesn't get killed. Match 16 is a big match because Jarrett's challenging for Ron the Truth Killings World title. So you know for sure that some shady slap nuts business is going to go down. And as expected, during Jarrett's 10 punches in the corner, something happens to the ref's eye off camera. Jarrett checks his okay and then wallops Truth with the chair. That doesn't end the match. Later in the match, the ref randomly decides to stand behind Jarrett as the Truth crashes into him. Whilst both men are down, Vince Russo debuts in TNA and he hits the Truth with the guitar, handing Jeff his first TNA title reign. 11 ref bumps in 16 matches. Match 17 is the rematch with Truth challenging Jarrett for the belt. I remember this ref bump. Truth picks Jarrett up for the back sack and crack, but he can't give him a smack because Jarrett's legs knock the referee out. Jarrett wins with the stroke and Truth's TNA career might as well be over, and it's only November 2002. Match 18 is the Harris brothers taking on Jarrett who's supposed to team with Mold Dog but he's been knocked out backstage. So it's Jarrett beating up two guys for five minutes. Jarrett wins this one without help or a ref bump. I'm already getting sick of hearing Jeff Jarrett my world. God, how much more of this? I'm not even a tenth of the way. This might be the end of the Hawk Shove It squad. Match 19 is the third time Jeff Jarrett vs Kurt Hedick happens. The ref almost makes it through this match unscathed but in the last two minutes there's a ref bump. And what a dumb one this is. Jarrett slams Hedick into the turnbuckle, half hits and half falls backwards into the ref. This is a ref bump. Russo hits Hedick with the guitar and that's how Jarrett wins this one. Match 20. This one is a 3 on 1 handicap gauntlet match with Jarrett facing Elix Skipper, Loki and Daniels. So it's essentially 3 matches in 1, but apparently it only counts as 1 match. So if you love Jeff Jarrett, TNA from the 8th of January 2003 is the show for you. Jeff beats Daniels cleanly, but this poor ref has to get through two more guys. Skipper is in next, but Daniels interferes and hits a diving close on his own friend to eliminate him. Still no ref bump. Last to fight, Jarrett is low key. And the referee is Andrew Thomas, and he must be the luckiest referee of all time, because the worst thing that happens to him is distractions. Jarrett has it won, but Skipper rushes the ring, causing a DQ. It's worth pointing out that Jarrett is a face at this point, so maybe less ref bumps. What's the score? 13 and 20 from the look of it. Match 21 is an 8 man tag, so will the refs continue their lucky streak? I think he's got a shot. And I'm right, the ref is unharmed as Vince Russo and Triple X win this one thanks to Nikita Koloff for some reason. Match 22 is a 3 on 1 over the top rope handicap elimination match. Jarrett was being pushed like Super Cena at this point. In this match, Mold Dog Flau fights the referee who's his real life brother. And I think this counts because it strongly affects the outcome of the match. And that outcome is a Jarrett win. Match 23 is AJ Styles challenging for the title. I thought the ref was going to survive this one, but just before the end, the ref stupidly walks into a Styles diving forearm. They do bring out a replacement referee, but he's also killed when Jarrett monkey flips AJ into the new ref. Referee Andrew Thomas has a bad night as he's distracted by Desire for a full two minutes. He stops being distracted in time to count the pin for the stroke from the top rope. 16 bumps in 23 matches. Match 24 is a six man, nothing happens and Jarrett wins with the stroke. Number 25 will be a big title match with D'Lo challenging for the Slapnuts belt. I've got a bad feeling that the ref's in trouble for this one. It's battled with both guys seemingly in a bad mood who pissed in their cereal. And I'm soon proved right when Jarrett smacks the referee for bothering him whilst he tries his 10 punches in the corner. The ref pretty much no-sells the punch because he manages to count a 2 for D'Lo seconds later. Then there's another ref bump. Jarrett flies from the top rope trying to hit D'Lo but he hits the ref instead. Super Andrew Thomas counts another 2 30 seconds later. He's a bit more durable than other refs it seems. Jarrett eventually wins the match with a stroke. Match 26 is also a handicap match. It's Jarrett taking on Julio, De Niro and Mickey James in a clockwork orange house of fun match. You gotta love this one. Jarrett hits Mickey with a power slam into the cage but the referee gets in the way. 
Slap Nuts is actually pinned by Julio De Niro after Raven suplexes him for a table on top of the gathering. Match 27. I'm dying already. It's Raven taking on Jarrett for the belt. Yep, the ref screwed in this one. It's a couple of wrestlers who love using weapons and two guys who don't like authority. Yep, referee Rooney Charles is screwed. It's actually going okay until the ref gets up on the ring apron. He's promptly smashed into by Jarrett and both guys kick each other in the nutsack. And the stroke, it's over. People throw rubbish into the ring. Number 28 would be another title match. Yes, Jarrett's still the champion, and the challenger now is gifted Glenn Gilberti. How is he gifted? The ref only has two minutes more to last, but then Jarrett shoves Disco into him and this is a ref bump. Russo hits Disco with a bat and Jarrett wins it with the stroke. Christ, I hope you're keeping track because I'm losing it. Number 29 is a freeway for the Slapnuts belt. AJ Styles and Raven the challengers. Really dumb ref bump in this one. Jarrett carries Styles into the referee. Why didn't he move out the way? It's not an answer I can provide, I'm afraid. But this match is different because Russo hits Jarrett with the guitar and AJ wins the heavyweight belt with the Styles Clash for the first time. I think this is a good point for a count up. I make it 22 and 29. Is it possible with the multiple ref bumps that we can actually finish with more ref bumps than matches? Match 30 is Jarrett and Sting versus AJ Styles and X-Pac. The ref has a fancy bow tie on on this one, but I'm not sure it's going to help him. This is a good one. Jarrett ducks and Styles super kicks the referee out of the bow tie. Jarrett wins with a top rope stroke. I can't wait for Jarrett to turn heel. It might be as many as five ref bumps a match. Wow, we've actually just got past the point that I've got up to with my NWA TNA series. Number 31 is Jarrett and Raven taking on gifted Glenn Gilberti and Shane Douglas. The match ends because James Mitchell throws a fireball at Raven. No ref bump. Number 32 is Jarrett taking on Just Joey Legend. During this match, the ref tries to stop Jarrett using a chair, and he's desperate to stop him. Seems like a bad decision, and seconds later Jarrett shoves him. He also smacks security members of a chair, but they aren't refs so they don't count. Russo distracts Jarrett allowing Just Joe to hit slap nuts with the belt and that's the three. Match 33 will be a guitar and a baseball bat and a pole match between Just Joe and Just Jarrett. This match is a complete mess. There's people everywhere. But despite that, there's new ref bump and Jarrett wins with a diving guitar shot. Jarrett's still a face, surprisingly. Match 34, Jarrett and Eric Watts versus Daniels and Joey Legend. I'm in shock, Jarrett wins with a roll up and the ref is standing tall. Match 35, a five on five steel cage match. Eric Watts is the special referee, so that even means he's going to take a big bump or he's going to be tough enough not to get beaten up. Well, Team Jarrett win and Eric Watts is not bumped. No ref bump for a while, it seems. Maybe Slapnuts has seen the error of his ways. 36, Jarrett versus Daniels has no ref bump. Match 37, tag match. Jarrett and Dusty Rhodes taking on Styles and Vince Russo. No ref bump either, and Dusty Rhodes wins by sitting on AJ Styles' face. I wouldn't like to take that one. Match 38, Jeff Jarrett challenging for the NWA heavyweight title against Styles. This seems like a really fun match, but more importantly, we get our first ref bump in a while when Jarrett kicks out of the pin and AJ falls on the ref. Jarrett quickly hits AJ with the belt and makes the cover for the three. Not sure why the ref had to be bumped, they used weapons the entire match. But more importantly, Jeff Jarrett is once again the heavyweight champion. Match 39, Jeff Jarrett taking on Hacksaw Jim Duggan. The match absolutely nobody wanted to see. The ref is distracted so Slappy slaps Duggan with the guitar for the three. Match 40, Rick Steiner taking on Slapnuts. Slappy's now a heel, so we'll see if that changes anything. Well, almost straight away it does, because Jarrett pulls the referee into a diving Rick Steiner bulldog. Jarrett hits the guitar shot, but someone calls for a DQ. The ref's dead, so no idea who that was. Number 41, Jeff Jarrett vs Sting. Late into the match, Sting tries the Scorpion Deathlock, which Slappy fights off, and it causes the ref to get crushed in the corner. The match is eventually thrown out for a DQ finish. Jeff immediately hits the ref with a chair. I know it technically wasn't during the match, but it was literally one second after the bell rang, so I'm counting it. Jeff Jarrett had it in his mind before the bell rang. Match number 42, Sting and Styles take on Luger and Jarrett. No ref bump, and Luger takes a bat to the gut and he's rolled up by Styles. Fans revenge match, Dusty Rhodes versus Jeff Jarrett. It only goes four minutes, but there's still somehow time for Jarrett to kick Dusty in the slash zone, which causes Dusty to swing backwards with his elbow to cause a ref bump. That doesn't even make sense. He clearly knew Jarrett was in front of him. Match is thrown out as usual. Match 44, NWA heavyweight title match. Jarrett defending against Styles. Guess it took him a while to get his rematch. There's no need to scratch. It's a 20 minute match, so the ref has no chance. Slapnuts throws AJ's Integuri attempt into the referee's head for a ref bump. A new ref arrives, but Kid Cash smacks him one, so that counts. Jarrett smacks Styles with the guitar as the original ref wakes up to count the three. Match number 45, Jarrett and Kid Cash taking on Styles and D'Lo Brown. AJ wins with a top rope Styles clash on Kid Cash and the ref lives to fight another day. 
Number 46, Slapnuts vs Sting. These two always have the same match, but then I'm proved wrong because there isn't a ref bump. Match number 47, tag match, Jarrett and Abyss vs AJ Styles and Eric Watts. I love this one, Eric Watts flies like a slug through the air and he crashes into the ref. Jarrett wins by hitting Watts with the title belt. The match is then restarted and Styles pins Abyss. Match 48, Jeff Jarrett vs El Leon who's just Apollo under a mask. Today shoving over Jarrett is a hilarious highlight. This is actually a really fun match, but then unfortunately there's a ref bump. The same ref then gets shoved to the floor for a second ref bump. The match ends up being thrown out. Match number 49, it's Dustin Rhodes vs Old Slapnuts for the first time in TNA. The ref is ripped from the ring when Dustin is about to win. Then the same ref is smashed again when Jarrett crashes into him in the corner. The ref wakes up in time for the Naturals to help Jarrett win. 50 matches and I'm still going. I'm a strong guy and I'm not just talking about my bench press. Here we go, Jarrett taking on Chris Harris aka Braden Walker. It seems that no referee is safe at this point in TNA. This one is killed when Harris misses his crossbody. Jarrett hits Harris with the belt and quickly throws it away. Then he realises the ref saw it the whole time so Slappy thinks on the fly and forces the ref to count the pin. Ok it's time for a recap because it's been a while, there's no need to smile. By my count that's 37 ref bumps and 50 Jeff Jarrett matches. It's not quite as many as I expected but I don't know, how bad is this you tell me. We start match 51 with Chris Harris getting a shot at the slap nuts belt but will there be another ref bump? The winner of the dumbest ref bump so far is this match. Completely against any rhyme or reason, Harris goes running and spears the ref with Jarrett no way near them. It looks dumb and even Slapnuts looks confused. He should be DQ'd for that. Then he really should be DQ'd when Jarrett pushes him into a new referee. That one's almost a hate crime. This match sets a new record as a third referee is ripped from the ring to the floor. Amongst all that chaos, Jarrett wins the guitar shot. So we have a new ref bumping champion match. I can't get over that Harris spear, that was so bad. It does help our ref bumps catch up though, we've got 40 and 51 now. Match 52, Cowboy James Storm vs Jeff Jarrett. Jeff immediately swings a chair at the ref but he misses. I almost found myself cheering Jarrett on then. Am I actually starting to finally understand Slapnuts? These black and white shirts, they just make him angry. Everyone wants to take his belt and these black and white shirts are helping those people. Jarrett sort of shoves the ref to the floor in this one which somehow blinds the referee for ages. Storm has it won but no ref. The ref actually stops Storm from using the guitar which allows Jeff to hit the stroke. How much was Slappy paying the referee here? Match 53, steel cage match for the heavyweight belt, Jarrett vs Styles. This one has a silly ref bump too. Jeff Jarrett sort of lightly runs Styles into the ref in the corner. This somehow blinds the ref and keeps him down for ages. They have blinded the ref so that Jarrett can fetch some powder. It feels like that was done the wrong way round, but it isn't. And then with AJ at the top of the cage, Jarrett shoves the referee into the cage causing Styles to fall and win the match I guess. So this is definitely one time Jarrett shouldn't have used his special finisher. I actually don't think this was supposed to be the real finish of the match because Styles comes back to the ring where he beats Slapnuts on the mat. 43 and 53, we're only 10 behind. Match 54, King of the Mountain match, Styles defending against Slapnuts, Truth, Harris and Raven. No ref bumps and Jeff Jarrett wins the belt straight back so a completely depressing affair. Match 55, another night where Jarrett has 3 matches in a row but this time they count separately. The first one is a strap on match against Conan. Apparently Jeff wins because he hits Conan 10 times. Match 56, hardcore match, Mold Dog will face Jarrett now. Jarrett wins with a stroke into the guardrail and the ref is still safe. The final match is number 57 against the truth. Jarrett shoves the ref to the floor in this one but he's resilient. Jarrett flips and smashes the ref with the guitar and then Killings wins, yay. Match 58, heavyweight title, Jarrett vs Ron the Truth Killings. Killings smashes out one referee. Truth then wins the match but the decision is reversed because Russo's a dick I guess. That's 46 in 58 so we're starting to slip behind again. Match 59, gauntlet match, Jarrett and Truth are the final two. Jarrett wins when Shamrock interferes and hits Truth with the guitar. It makes no sense and it has no ref bump. Match 60, I really struggled on that last 10. 8 man tag team guitar on a pole match. No ref bump and Slapnuts loses to the Dusty Rhodes elbow and it's a horrible match too. Match 61, okay moving into the shove sports era, it's Slapnuts vs Sharkboy. Jarrett wins cleanly, he kicks him in the slash zone which leads to the stroke. I mean he kicked him in the slash zone but it's pretty clean for a Jeff Jarrett match. Match 62, Jeff Jarrett vs Lex Love It, well I sure don't love it. I've had to sit through 62 Slapnuts matches and that almost feels like a joke calling a wrestler that. And guess what, I'm not even halfway through. Jarrett wins with a stroke. I guess when you're facing jobbers you don't need the bump. 
63, Jarrett versus Psychosis. What's with all these random ass matches? Anyway, no ref bump again, and of course Jarrett with the win. Match 64, Jarrett versus Irish Pat Kenny. Man, this run of jobbers really aren't helping his ref bump counter, but at least it's over quickly. Match 65, Jeff Jarrett versus Frankie Capone. I literally have no idea who that even is. Slapnuts need some damn competition here. Another match with no ref bump. Match 66, finally a heavyweight title match. Jeff Hardy, the challenger for the Slapnuts belt. We get crowd brawling here, and yes, there it is finally. Slapnuts smashes the ref with a chair in the crowd. The ref recovers in time to count the three for Slapnuts after his guitar shot. You'd think the ref wouldn't want to count a pin after being hit of a chair. Not looking great, it's 47 out of 66. To make matters worse, match 67, match 68 and match 69 were all two minute job matches that you can skip. Slapnuts doesn't need a ref bump to beat these guys. Match 70, this one is a massive hassle to find. It's Hardy and Jarrett fighting for the title in a cage. Will it be worth my efforts? Well yeah, actually it pays off. Hardy hits Jarrett with a flatliner which takes the ref out at the same time. Hardy goes on to miss his cage dive and Jarrett smacks him with a chain and it ends. Match 71 is a six man tag. This might be my favorite ref bump of all time. The ref is dragged out of the ring and then he's caught up between Styles and Petey Williams as they brawl. This is a ref bump. Jeff Hardy wins with the Swanton whilst dressed in the weirdest attire of all time and he's had a lot of weird. Match 72, Victory Road 2004, the first pay-per-view. Oh no, the stupid gorilla adverts are back. I guess my pop-up blocker has finally been smacked. After a quick break, NordVPN. And no, I'm not being paid to say that, it actually worked for me. But if anyone's watching, you can send my check to Bridgewater Bay where all the ladies spray. It's a ladder match for the heavyweight title, Jeff Hardy vs Slapnuts, Jeff Jarrett. Well, after all my talking, it's a ladder match at the end of the day, so there's no ref bump. Jarrett wins with help from Elvis and Kevin Nash. They are the kings of wrestling. Match 73, Jarrett vs J-Rock. This guy makes David Young look like the king of the cabbies. Jarrett beats him in record time. I think my master plan to make Jeff look silly has backfired. 49 and 73, I thought it would be more. Number 74, Monty Brown challenges for the Slapnuts belt. I smell a ref bump coming. And there it is, as Monty Brown is closing in on our victory, he tries the Scott Hall special, the sack of shit, but he throws Jarrett into the ref. Jarrett hits a guitar shot, the stroke, a chair shot, and Monty Brown is done. 75, turning point pay-per-view, a six-man tag as Kevin Nash decking the referee on the outside of the ring. A returning macho man gets the pin on Jarrett. Number 76, Jeff Jarrett versus Hector Garza. Garza tries to smash Jeff in the corner, but he misses and flies back out to smash the ref with his elbow. No other ref bumps, but Jarrett wins with the guitar shot whilst Garza is mid moonsault. That was a pretty cool ending. It was weird how for like two weeks they felt like they wanted to push Garza as a heavyweight. All right, moving into 2005 now. I say that like I'm happy. How can we only be in 2005? Can somebody please tell me how that's even possible? Match number 77 is Monty Brown challenging for the Slapnuts belt again. So you know for sure there's a ref bump coming. And just like clockwork, here's our bump. Monty desperately fights off the stroke and throws Slappy directly into the ref. A bad looking ref bump. This allows Jeff to hit a guitar shot, a chair shot, a belt shot. And then Jarrett ducks a pounce attempt for a second ref bump. I like that one. A new referee arrives on the scene and he's just in time to watch the stroke and count the three for Jarrett as he's the winner. Match number 78 will also be a heavyweight title match. This time, Kevin Nash challenges for the belt. This is another entry for the dumbest ref bump. Nash tries the jackknife and randomly swings Jarrett's legs to knock out the referee. Why would he even swing him like that? That's not part of his usual move. This allows Nash to hit a power bomb on the cello. We also get a second ref bump when Jarrett is fighting off a choke slam attempt. Jarrett wins this match and these last few matches are really helping our score even out. It's now 54 ref bumps in 73 matches. I'm feeling positive. I think Jarrett can do it. Hang on, what's happened here? We're cheering on the ref bumps now. This is like the opposite to how people normally feel about ref bumps. I get so excited when I see one of those black and white pricks fall to the mat. I guess this is how Jarrett feels. Match 79 is against DDP for the title. I was starting to worry about this one because it seemed too obvious, but I wasn't let down in the end. DDP shoves the ref into Jarrett, making him fall in his nutsack on the top rope. This is also so Billy Gunn can interfere and try to beat up DDP. We also get X-Pac interfering, a million other people interfering. Monty Brown screws DDP leading to a Jarrett win. A sickening match in the death of Monty Brown in TNA. Match number 80, six sides of steel now. We don't need any ref bumps because anything goes. Although I'm still struggling to figure out when the weapon shots are allowed in TNA. X-Pac wins with a roll up on Monty Brown. No ref bump. 
I've got high hopes for the next one. Match 81 is against AJ Styles for the Slap Nuts belt. Yes, he still has that belt, even at this point. That was until I realised that the special referee is cage fighter Tito Ortiz, winner of the best TNA re-debut of all time. This match completely explains Jarrett's hate for anything black and white. Tito just won't let Slapnuts cheat, it isn't fair. Later Jarrett tries to bump into Tito Ortiz, but Slapnuts just isn't strong enough. The ref smacks Jarrett one, allowing Styles to hit the spiral tap for the free. So these stupid black and white refs were the reason that Slapnuts lost his belt. He was on a record setting run there, you can just feel Jeff's hatred for them. Match 82 is a tag match, AJ and X-Pac versus Jarrett and Monty Brown. This is a good one too, in this one the ref wants to stop Jarrett from using his guitar. They have a tug of war over it, ending with Jarrett shoving the ref to the floor. Jarrett accidentally smacks Monty with the guitar and Stars wins with the spiral tap. Match 83, another tag match, Jeff's with Rhino and he takes on Sabu and Raven. Winner is the number one contender so you can place your bets on Slappy finding a way to win this one. In this one you can literally see Sabu telling the ref that it's time for the ref bump and moments later he's squashed with the gore. The bump is done so Abyss and Jeff Hardy can both interfere. A new ref arrives but Slapnuts isn't done yet. He is the strongest character in TNA. It ends when Rhino fires Raven through the table so incredibly no title shot for Slapnuts. I'm sure I'll get it back soon anyway. Match 84 is a 6 man tag, no ref bump, Monty Brown beats Stars with a pounce. And wouldn't you know, Jarrett regains the heavyweight title as predicted from Raven, and it was on a damn house show of all things. Number 85. Wow, 85 matches, this is insane, and I'm still standing. Actually, I'm sitting, but shut up or I'll smack you one. Bound for Glory 2005 for the NWA heavyweight title, Tito Ortiz is the special referee again, I wonder if it was Smack Jeff one. Nope, Tito's too tough, and he smacks all the interfering wrestlers instead, and Rhino wins it with the gore. He is the heavyweight champion. 59 out of 85. We've got to get through the Hawk Hogan TNA area yet, and I think the ref bumps will increase them. Match 86 for the heavyweight belt. Rematch, Jarrett versus Rhino. Yep, this one features one of those ref bumps, because Jarrett dodges the short arm clothesline and the ref gets taken out. Rhino has it won, but no ref. AMW kill Rhino, and the ref wakes up in time to see the stroke. Jarrett is the champion again. Thanks for coming, Rhino. <sighs> Number 87 is a six-man tag. Slapnuts wins with a top rope stroke on Saban. No ref bump. Number 88 is a six man tag on pay per view. Rhino and the Dudleys. Bubba is so white it could blind you. They face AMW and Slapnuts. In this one, the ref is dragged from the ring, but he manages to stay on his feet, so we can't count this as a ref bump. Team 3D win it with the 3D on James Storm. Number 89, it's Jarrett taking on Billy Gunn. No ref bump, and Jarrett wins due to a hockey stick to the back, followed by a stroke. Number 90, six man tag. Jarrett and AMW taking on the Naturals and Jeff Hardy. Another match with no ref bump, we seem to be going for a bit of a dry patch right now. Just like when you come home to your girl and she looks at you after she's been with the Hawk. She don't even want to talk. Number 91 on pay per view is Rhino challenging for the Slapnuts belt again. This has our first ref bump in what seems like forever. He takes a Rhino gore in the corner. Jarrett wins it with a stroke into chairs. Number 92 is weird, Jarrett and Monty Brown take on Shark Boy and Kenny King. Didn't even know Kenny King was in TNA in 2005. I think he's forgotten too, as Monty Brown destroys him and then Jarrett wins the stroke on the shark. It is now 2006. How the hell is it only 2006? Number 93, a pay-per-view tag match. Monty Brown, who doesn't even get an entrance, teams with his best friend Slapnuts to take on Christian and Sting. Monty Brown clotheslines the ref down because he missed Sting about 5 seconds earlier. It doesn't look great, but we'll take it. Steve Borden wins with the death drop on Slappy. Match number 94 is Jeff Jarrett beating Jay Lethal in 2 minutes with the most extreme selling of the stroke I've ever seen. Match 95. I've watched 95 Jeff Jarrett matches. I never thought I'd achieve something like this in my worthless life. 62 ref bumps out of 95 matches. I mean 2 thirds is a pretty big ratio, right? It's Jarrett defending the heavyweight title against Christian Cage. It's Earl Hebner, but will he be bumped? Well yes, and this is the worst ref bump yet. Jarrett slides through Christian's legs and lightly grazes Earl Hebner to sweep his legs out. I guess at his age it doesn't take much. He holds his shin like an episode of Family Guy for two minutes. I love Earl Hebner. Second ref bump because Jarrett sends Christian into the corner where Earl Hebner was trying to heal from his ankle injury. A new bold referee has arrived. It's shady referee Slip. This is the best match for me. The new referee gets kicked in the slash zone by Slapnuts. Cage has it won, but no ref. Christian eventually wins with the Unpredia. He's the new champion. We're going to need a recount after that one. We're sitting at 65 out of 95. I'm feeling re-energised. Match 96, we go from that to a pointless 8-man tag that went less than 2 minutes. Jarrett with the stroke on Norman Smiley for the win. 
Match 97, a pointless eight-man tag on pay-per-view. I don't rate our chance of a ref bump in this one. And as usual, the Hawk is correct because the ref manages to dodge a bump and then he counts the three on Jarrett hitting the stroke on the truth. Number 98, Jarrett and Steiner versus the Naturals. They all seem extra pissed off. I think the ref could be in danger here, but no, it's just thrown out for being too violent. Match 99, six-man tag. The Dudley boys taking on MW and Slapnuts. It's all going wrong. Slapnuts wins with a hockey stick stroke finish and no ref bump. A hundred. A hundred Slappy McSlapson matches. And guess what? This one's a complete waste of time. It's six sides of steel and my hopes did raise slightly when I saw it was Earl Hebner, but sadly not. Sting wins the Scorpion Deathlock. Match 101 is Steiner and Jarrett tagging up again. Can we please have a ref bump, Steiner? Slapnuts? Anyone? They take on Samoan Joe and Steve Borden. No, still no ref bump. I'm feeling really let down by Steiner. I thought he'd be beating the referee senseless in TNA. Match number 102 is Slapnuts taking on Raven. This is a really fun chaotic brawl, but will there be a ref bump? Yes, there it is. And just like Bridgewater Bay buses, when you've been waiting for a long time, two come along at once. These were ref bumps. It ends when Larry Zabisco's hit with the guitar, allowing Jarrett to hit the stroke. Match number 103 is a King of the Mountain match. We just don't get these ref bumps that we need in these gimming matches. Well, the ladder is shoved over and Abyss flings it back and it smacks out Earl Hebner. As far as ref bumps go, this was highly enjoyable. Larry Zabisco is the stand-in referee, but he's smacked out too for a second ref bump. Earl Hebner then ends the match by tipping the ladder over when Christian and Sting are on top of it, and Jarrett wins it to capture the belt, and then he's frantically pelted with rubbish. Classic Jeff Jarrett match in TNA. 104. A tag match with Cage and Sting taking on Jarrett and Steiner. Come on, do something, Scotty! Well, Jarrett has it won with a stroke, but Christian pulls the ref out of the ring and he splats to the ground, so this is a ref bump. Sting and Christian win it when the ref wakes up. Match 105. Can we take a moment to appreciate that the Hawk has watched 105 Slapnuts matches? Just to see how many refs died. 105 matches, I need to get a life. It'll be a title match with Jay Lethal Challenger with the Slapnuts belt. Jarrett wins with the Super Stroker. I'm going to have PTSD when I hear Slapnuts theme music from now on. 70 ref bumps so far. 106. Jarrett vs Sting for the Slapnuts belt. This match features Steiner dragging the referee all over the arena, but Steiner doesn't bump him. Then we do finally get the ref bump we've all been waiting for, when Sting squashes the ref in the corner with the Stinger splash. Match ends when Christian screws Sting with a guitar. 107. Fans Revenge Lumberjack match. It has no ref bump, unfortunately, and Samoa Joe wins. Match 108. Lance Hoyt vs Jarrett. Match is thrown up because Jarrett's being a dick to Lance Hoyt. My world, my world. Sorry, it's match 109. I was dreaming of doing something else. Literally anything else. A tag match which Jarrett wins. Literally nothing to say. Match number 110. Sting vs Jarrett with the perk angle as the enforcer. Not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Actually, it means he might be here to count the three because the normal ref has been killed. I've got high hopes now. Well, Jarrett punches out Ankle when he's holding a chair. Sadly, this won't count as a ref bump as he wasn't the acting referee at that time. Then there's a ref bump because Kurt Angle Angle slams the referee. I think he just felt left out. He literally kicks him out of the ring to add insult to injury. Match ends when Jarrett no-sells the guitar and taps out to Sting. Sting is now the champion. Yes, Jarrett had the belt the whole time, believe it or not. The match rate does slow down a bit from now due to Jeff taking so much time away from TNA regularly. Because of that, we've just moved into 2007. Match 111, six sides are still. No ref bump, and more annoyingly, Jarrett's now a face. I mean, it wasn't exactly going well for us anyway, was it? Sting wins it thanks to Jarrett. Match 102, Jarrett versus Rude. No ref bump, which surprised me, because Rude is a dick at this point in his career. That's actually us into 2008 now, some nice progress. Match 113, the first match in the feud between Angle and Jeff Jarrett. From memory, there was a lot of ref bumps in this feud, and the Hawk has proved right so far when Angle clotheslines the referee. Foley is now the referee. Angle hits him with a chair for our second ref bump of the match. Angle has it won and the old ref tries to count the pin. Foley rips him out of the ring and he splats to the mat. Foley is now the ref again, but Angle can't hurt him. Slapnuts hits Angle with the guitar and that's the three. Here we go, it's game on. I knew these later matches would help Slapnuts cause. We're at 75 out of 113. But more importantly, how can I still have 60 matches left to watch? Match 114 skipped all the way to 2009 now. It's Jarrett versus Angle again. This one features Angle choking referee Slick, but he doesn't bump. I was soon surprised to find out this match didn't feature a single Slapnuts ref bump and, and Angle wins with a sneaky pin. The first Jeff Jarrett match on Impact for three years is up next. It's match number 115. Jarrett teams up with Foley to take on Sting and Angle. Angle dodges a Jarrett clothesline and the ref has been flattened. 
He actually wakes up really quickly to count the pin for Foley beating Sting. 116, a 20-man gauntlet match in a steel cage. I have zero recollection of this one ever happening. Scott Steiner does an angle slam to eliminate Jarrett. Very rare for someone else's finisher to work. No ref bump and it's won by Samoan Joe. 117, yet another lethal lockdown match. No ref bump. Match 118, Jarrett versus Steiner in a Cactus Jack smack attack, whatever that is. Guitar and the strike for the win. It really doesn't feel like we're making progress. What's the score? It's 76 out of 118 from the look of it. Match number 119, a 10-man tag with no ref bump, which Sting wins. Match 120, Jeff Jarrett taking on Samoan Joe. Joe is going for his penis face tattoo look. He's also a dick and he throws the referee to the floor. The ref then decides to try and protect Jarrett, so Joe hurls him to the guardrail. Two ref bumps, the match is thrown out for DQ. Match 121, ultimate sacrifice match for the heavyweight title. Late into the match, Angle has the ankle lock on Foley, but he sends him into referee slip. Jarrett hits a stroke on Angle into the chairs and Sting steals the win. Match 122, Jarrett versus Eric Young. Jarrett wins in three minutes. Match 123, triple threat tag match. Slapnuts teaming up with Foley, but their tag team partners just don't get on. Joe wins with the muscle buster whilst AJ looks annoyed that Joe didn't let him do a springboard move. Not that it's relevant to the video, I just thought I'd point it out. Match 124 is yet another King of the Mountain match. I miss Earl Hebner. No ref bumps to be found here. Kurt Angle wins when Samoan Joe just hands him the victory. Match 125, heavyweight title match. Angle and Joe taking on Styles and Slaps. Angle looks horrible at this point. Referee Slick needs to piss off. He's not bumping enough for my liking. I spoke too soon. AJ hits him with a springboard flying forearm. Eventually Slapnuts passes out to the ankle lock. Times have certainly changed. Match 126, triple threat. Foley and Slapnuts the challengers for the angle title. Eric Young will be the referee for some reason, but he's a bent referee and it's a recreation of the Montreal screw job. Match 127, nothing happens. Match 128, nothing happens and I blame Slick Johnson. Match 129, falls count anywhere. A bold way past it, Val Venus beats Jeff Jarrett up in a toilet. It's hilarious, but sadly no ref bump. Match number 130, Jarrett versus Tomko. This sure ain't going anywhere. Jarrett does win it, which is nice for him, but not for me. Match 131, nothing. Match 132, nothing. This video's come to a screeching halt. Match 133, AJ Styles versus Jeff Jarrett. This match marks the return of the ref bump. The ref is distracted by Flair's wooing on the outside of the ring when both guys crash into him. He goes flying. I forgot how sweet a ref bump could be. Styles wins the Styles Clash in the slowest count ever. 40 matches to go, we're on the home straight. Match 134, it's lethal lockdown again, I pass. Match 135, nothing to say apart from get that bold bastard Slick Johnson out of here. Match 136, a really bad Fools Cut Anywhere tag match, somehow Jarrett is pinned on a staircase. Match 137, a pay-per-view match against Sting where Jarrett literally loses in 12 seconds. 2010 really was the worst year of Jarrett's wrestling career. Match 138, it wouldn't be Nash versus Jarrett without a ref bump and we're treated to one. It's become a pretty rare thing to be honest. The ref is crushed in the corner, probably helps that it wasn't Bold Boy Slick Johnson. Unfortunately for Jarrett, Wolfpack Sting is here in 2010 and he's also a dick. Can't he take his 12 second win and move on? Nash wins the match. Match 139, Jarrett versus Wolfpack Sting. It's that dumb suplex into the ring whilst the other guy trips them up finish, Dick Johnson. Match 140, in this tag match we have a referee I've never seen before. Maybe he dies in this match which would explain why we never see him again. No such luck though, Samoan Joe wins with the submission. Maybe after the match Joe ate him. Match 141 is a battle royal, so unless they land on a ref there isn't going to be a ref bump, and there isn't. Match 142, pointless. Match 143, pointless. In fact it's so pointless that they ran out of time and it didn't make it onto the main show. Match 144. Now it might seem like this is a lost cause and Jarrett will never reach 100 ref slaps. Well as we move into 2012, Jarrett's booking actually got a bit stronger and he started to win again. It's Jeff Jarrett versus Samoan Joe on pay-per-view. Jeff is up to his usual shenanigans with weapons and the ref wants to stop him. Joe smashes the ref and slap nuts with a suicide dive. Jeff Jarrett wins this one with a rear naked choke. So things are finally looking up. It's time for an update. 83 ref bumps in 144 matches. So the ratio has really slipped now overall, it's closer to half than two thirds. But I still have hope we can make 100. Match 145 will be a submission match against the man with the mohawk, Jesse Neal. Like father, like son, Jarrett pulls Brian Hebb in front of the Jesse Neal spear. Jarrett smacks Jesse with the guitar and he makes the mohawk boy pass out. Match 146, the finish wasn't even on impact, so who knows, if someone killed a ref on this episode it wasn't worth his time. Match 147, another submission match between Samoan Joe and Slapnuts. No ref bump, unfortunately, and Slapnuts knocks Joe out with the ankle lock. 
Literally nothing to say about the next four matches. This isn't going well. Match 152 is a 7 on 2 handicap match. I wasn't exactly expecting a ref bump in this match when they're clearly already an advantage for one team. But Storm super kicks the referee to prove me wrong. Jarrett wins with a stroke on angle. Match 153, Jarrett loses in a tag match. Match 154 is Jarrett and Angle on pay per view again, so chances are we should be in luck with this one. And I'm right, Angle fights off a stroke attempt by shoving Jeff into the referee. Jeff wins with a sneaky pin. 86 ref bumps, I don't think we're going to quite make it. We desperately need some matches with multiple ref bumps. I never thought I'd be asking for that, it's really weird how making this video has changed my mentality. Match 155, nothing happens. Match 156 is a 2 out of 3 falls cage match, I'm feeling good about this one. No Slick Johnson too, so things are hopeful over here in Bridgewater Bay. Finally it happens, Karen Jarrett sprays hairspray in Kurt's eyes which blinds him, and then he knocks out the referee. Karen Jarrett literally wins the match for Slapnuts. Another three matches now with nothing happening. We're all the way up to match 160, it's China and Kurt Angle teaming up against the Jarrett family, but nothing happens. Match 161 is Morgan versus Jarrett. This one does have a ref bump. I wasn't expecting it, but Karen Jarrett sweeps out Earl Hebner's legs with a crutch. That allows Steiner to sneak into the ring and hit the flatliner, so Slapnuts is the winner. Never thought I'd be so happy to see Karen Jarrett. That brings us to 88. Match 162 is a match where Karen Jarrett's pushed down a flight of stairs to write her off TV. So I spoke too soon about being happy to see her because we won't see her again. Steiner wins when the cameraman completely missed whatever he did. Match 163, Kurt Angle would slap nuts on pay-per-view again. Late in the match, Angle has the ankle lock on. Jarrett gets desperate and he throws Kurt off into referee Brian Hebner. He's become one of my favourite referees. Earl Hebner used to be, but he does nothing except end the match when Jarrett taps out. Match 164, a match taking place in a car park and there is no referee, so no ref bump. Match 165, nothing. We're not going to make it, are we? Why did Jeff Jarrett stop hating on the referees so much? I don't get it, they're such hateable people. Match 166, nothing. Match 167, nothing. Match 168 and 169 at turning point features Jeff Hardy beating old Slapnuts in 5 seconds. Jarrett begs for another match which Hardy accepts and beats him again in 5 minutes. A waste of time, so why am I talking about it? Match 170, Jarrett loses to Hardy again. Match 171, yet again nothing. They really calmed it on the ref bumps, didn't they? Match 172 is a cage match which sounds okay, but then you realise it's against Jeff Hardy. Well at least, there is a ref bump, and what a ref bump it is. Slapnut shoves the ref into the cage door which takes out Hardy, Sting and another referee on the outside too. So it's a double ref bump. It doesn't help Jarrett anyway because Jeff wins with the twist of fate. That loss to Jeff Hardy takes Jarrett away from TNA for a couple more years. So the last two matches are from 2015. The first is a King of the Mountain match, and I believe we've only had one King of the Mountain match with ref bumps. So chances are we're not getting anything, and I'm right. Jarrett wins the belt and no ref bump. What a load of bullshit. The final Jeff Jarrett match. Well, I can't believe I've actually made it. I guess anything is possible in this life. The last match is a lethal lockdown match. And just as it's gone the whole way through this video, there's no ref bump. Drew McDonald wins it and TNA rids the wrestling world of global fast wrestling. And we finish Jeff Jarrett's run with 91 ref bumps in 174 matches. So that's a final percentage of roughly 53.5 slapnut matches having a ref bump. But if you want to make it look bad, just work it out up to the end of 2006, which was the end of his main run. He had 72 ref bumps and 111 matches, which is a percentage of 65%. So you can really see why people hated his reign of terror. We did have a bit of fun about this over on Instagram. I do things like this from time to time, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I was asking people to guess the final score. I had literally hundreds of people send me their best guess on Instagram. And I thought nobody was going to get it, but just before I was about to upload this video, Congratulations, Zach Young. You are the real life wrestling referee slapometer. And I hope one day you can meet Jeff Jarrett himself and he can hit you in the head with a guitar. There's a brick in the post coming to you, my little friend. And if I ever get to meet you, a punch square to the gut. I am sad we never made it to 100 ref bumps, but maybe Jeff Jarrett can have one last TNA run and put that right. Will Slapnuts become a victim at SummerSlam? Who knows? I'm going to bed counting ref bumps blows.